Hi, my name is Sam and welcome to our video tutorial on an introduction to the RNA-seq analysis portal. In today's video tutorial, I will show you how we go through and use the three simple steps to upload, align, and design an experiment and how we use step number four and step number five in order to export our analysis into GeneLobe and find our digital PCR or real-time PCR assays in order to do biological verification of our data that we generated in the RNA-seq analysis portal. For today's experiment, we've gone through and we've extracted RNA from different Form 1 fixed paraffin embedded samples. For each of the samples that we're looking at, we've extracted RNA from the tumor part and also from the normal adjacent tissue. After extracting the RNA, we built an RNA-seq library by using Kyogen FastSelect to block the ribosomal RNA and using the Kyogen stranded RNA library kit in order to build a library for sequencing on an Illumina sequencing machine. Following sequencing, we generated FASTQ files for each individual sample. And this is where we're going to take the FASTQ files, upload them into the RNA-seq analysis portal. We'll look at the differential gene expression, identify pathways, upstream regulators, and potential diseases and functions based on the gene expression signature. At this point, we will filter the data in order to develop out a very important, highly relevant biomarker panel. We will look at the genes that are differentially expressed as well as the false discovery rate p-value in order to stratify our uh, data points into the most important ones. And then we'll take those back into GeneGlobe to design a digital PCR, a real-time PCR panel in order to go through and to look at more samples and do biological verification of our gene expression biomarker signature. There are five different steps that I wanna highlight in today's tutorial. The first will be a demonstration of how to log into the RNA-seq analysis portal and upload a FASTQ file. Secondly, we'll go through and we'll align the sample to a reference genome to identify and calculate the gene expression. The third step is to design an experiment to calculate the differential gene expression between the normal and tumor samples. Then we will identify the top pathways, upstream regulators, and disease and cellular functions. After we've gone through, we will filter the data based on these values. And then lastly, we'll save our results and find our real-time PCR and digital PCR assays for biological verification in GeneGlobe. Here we are within the RNA-seq analysis portal. There's three simple steps that we have to do first before we're ready to go through and look at our differentially expressed genes. First thing we need to do is to upload our sequencing data. To upload our sequencing data, we simply click the Upload Data button. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to align and count. After we've uploaded our data, we will click on Align Sample Data. The third thing we're going to do is to create an experiment. And during the Create Experiment phase, this is where we'll take our aligned sequencing data and we will compare the different samples that we've designed in our experiment. To get started, first thing I'm gonna do is upload data. So I click upload data. I'm going to click on browse in order to find the files that I want to upload. Here I have the FASTQ files from my data set here. So I'm going to select these. I have six samples. Each individual sample has eight FASTQ files, which will be automatically concatenated during the upload procedure. Once I click upload the 48 files, you can see that the files are now streaming from my desktop computer up to the RNA-seq analysis portal cloud. On the right-hand side, the individual FASTQ files have been concatenated together into the samples. If you click on learn more, you can see a little bit about the grouping of our FASTQ files and the type of file structure that we're looking for in order to concatenate together the individual files into a sample. Our data analysis has now been completed. We are now ready to jump into the experimental view and see our differential gene expression in our QC report for our sequencing run. Clicking on the open button, we now come into the experimental view. You can see in the left-hand side where our project is, and we can see in the middle here two different tiles. The first tile we see is the differential gene expression. The next tile that we see on the right-hand side are the samples and quality control. The first tile we're going to jump into is the samples and quality control. 
Jumping into this tile, we have three different tabs. The first tab is the experimental summary. The second tab says samples, and this is a PCA analysis of our individual samples. This allows us to look at how close the replicates cluster together in order to identify outliers. In this particular data set, two of the three tumor and two of the three normal samples cluster extremely close with each other, while there appears to be some outliers. While there is an outlier uh, for the tumor and the normal sample, this should not be unexpected for FFP samples. We could jump further into the data by clicking on the quality control tab, and this gives us all the sequencing statistics, the alignment statistics, and allows us to look at the RNA biotypes that were mapped. Starting from the left-hand side, we have a quality control summary. We have a summary of the trimming, a summary of the mapping statistics, the spike in quality control if we had used it, the mapping by the different types of RNAs, whether it mapped to a gene, the intron and exon region, if it mapped to an intron or mapped to an exon or mapped to an intergenic region, a visual representation of the biotype distribution. And then lastly down here, we have the different types of RNA biotypes that were identified in our sample. The other tab that we have in our experimental view is a differential expression. In this differential expression view, we're looking at the gene expression between the tumor and the normal samples. If we click on this tab, this now brings us in to our differential gene expression view. In the center part of our screen, we have a volcano plot. On the x-axis, we have the log two of the full change. To the right-hand side of the center line, our genes are being upregulated, shown here in green. To the left-hand side, our genes being downregulated, shown here in orange. Anytime we cursor over one of these individual circles, this is a gene and it will give us its name, the full change value, and the false discovery rate p-value. These green lines here are the full change and the statistical line. And these can be used to further filter the features or the genes for their statistical significance and full change. In the upper left-hand corner, we have the genes. When we cursor over the genes, it should show where they are on our graph, and we can sort these by name, full change, or FDR p-value. On the right-hand side, we have the heat map, and the heat map will show us the genes which are within the upper right-hand and the upper left-hand quadrant. These are the genes which are shown as green or gold circles. The lower left-hand corner are the results of our gene expression experiment returned from ingenuity. The canonical pathways, upstream regulators, and disease or functions that have been identified based on the differential gene expression are shown here. These data can further be filtered. And for example, we can use the upstream regulators if we click on this to further filter our data. So for example, we can filter box M1 as an upstream regulator and clearly identify the genes within that pathway, which are within our statistical significant filter set. In this case, it would be genes that are upregulated by 1.1 or downregulated greater than 1.1 fold and have an FDRP value less than 0.1. In this particular experiment, there's 10 genes that would be regulated by FOXM1. We can also go through and filter our data dynamically by I, uh, visually filtering by moving these filtering lines to the left and to the right, and also by changing the p-value. And we can also go through and change those numbers down here. So if we want an FDR p-value of 0.05, a full change of negative 25, and maybe on the other side, a full change of 12 and a half, we can just type that into the data here. As we change the filtering, this updates the features in the left-hand corner, as well as the heat map in the right-hand corner. What the heat map is showing us is the individual samples that are being dynamically grouped together based on the gene expression component. On the top, they're being grouped together based on uh, here samples, and then on the long axis based on the gene expression. And the idea here is that these are very well-behaved samples where we see the grouping correlates with whether it's a normal or a tumor type. In some instances, this hierarchical clustering may not group together based on the 
um, metadata that we've provided. And that could indicate that this sample is an outlier or there was something wrong during the processing and annotation of those files. Further getting into the lower left-hand corner here, we can click on View Details. And when we click on View Details, we'll also get some more information here. These results are being returned to us from the CAIH knowledge base using the Ingenuity Pathway Analysis um, algorithms. In these top tens that we have here, there's a lot of information that allows us to go through and to prioritize targets within the list. And if we had a much larger statistical uh, analysis being done with more samples here, even predictions can show up. So in this particular case here, we have enough confidence that SAV1 is an upstream regulator and it's being inhibited in this analysis that we're doing here. This allows us to not only identify upstream and downstream regulators, but to predict whether or not a pathway or disease or process is being activated or inhibited. Once we've gone through here and looked at our data, and we've decided on that these are our prioritized gene expression biomarkers, it's now time to go through step four, which is to set the filters. If we're happy with the filters, at this point, it's time to go to step five. In step five, we're going to save the filters. And so we can rename this anything we want. And I'm actually going to rename this samples of filter set A. And then I'm going to hit save and go. When I hit save and go, this will take us back to Gene Globe. And this is where we can go through and start to find the assays for our downstream biological verification of our data set that we've used RNA sequencing for the discovery part of our experiments. With the genes that we've returned, here we've returned 36 genes that fit our filtering requirements. In the middle here, we can further filter these based on whether they were upregulated or downregulated. So we currently have the upregulated genes and the downregulated genes. We can click on show all to show all the genes that we have within our data set here. And we can further filter them based on the p value as well as the full chain value. Up on the top here, if we click on pathways, pathways allow us to go through and to identify the genes and the activation molecules that are within those pathways. So here, clicking on IL-17A signaling and airway cells, you can see that we now have a couple of different pathways here that can help us identify additional targets that we may want to look at during our biological verification. Going back to the genes, as we were um, importing these genes back into GeneGlobe, GeneGlobe was searching its inventory of biological assays in order to identify both custom products as well as ready-to-order products for these genes. If we click on the ready-to-order products and we click on show our filters over here on the right-hand side, we can go through and further filter our data for particular types of downstream assays. So if we wanted to find a probe-based qPCR assay, we could click on Quaninova LNA probe-PCR assays. We can click on apply, hide this. And then now we have the individual probe-based real-time PCR assays that we can order for the genes that we've indicated or that we've brought over from our RNA-seq experiment. And if there's a particular gene such as TIP1A that is really important to you, we can simply click on this and we'll identify the assays for that particular gene. So this concludes an introduction into the RNA-seq analysis portal. This portal is available for researchers who are using our CHIA-seq microRNA library kits, our stranded mRNA and total RNA kits, and our UPX 3' transcriptome kits. With this analysis, it allows you to quickly go through, upload your data, align it to your reference genomes of human, mouse, or rat, and also to design an experiment that allows you to identify differentially expressed genes, which you can filter using ingenuity pathway analysis, the full change, and the false discovery rate p-value. Once we've identified our most important biomarkers, we can come back to GeneGlobe to do our next experiment which is to do biological verification on more samples using real-time and digital PCR assets. Kyogen. Sample to insight.